Hello guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and in today's video, we're going to cover a tutorial about Francis Turbine. So, I think I've told you before that for turbo machinery problems, you are usually given a lot of inputs, okay, and you are expected to get a few outputs from that information. So, that is exactly what's going to happen in this tutorial. So, for this question, what is given to you is the condition at inlet and also a few conditions at outlet. So what is given? The first thing that's given at inlet is that the alpha 1, which is the absolute flow angle at inlet, is 30 degrees. And also, V1 is given. This is capital V1, which is the absolute flow velocity. This is 6 meter per second. And then at exit, you are given alpha 2 equal to 80 degrees and also V2 is 3 meter per second. You are also given the radius at inlet, the radius is 300 millimeter and the radius at exit is 150 millimeter. And also general information that you have is that Q, which is the volume flow rate is 0 0.057 meter cube per second. And one more thing that you have is the omega, which is 25 radian per second. And based on these inputs, you're going to have to calculate a few things. So here, calculate. First is the torque, T. Second is the turbine head, which is HT. And finally is the fluid power. And according to our notes here, fluid power is... WF okay right so those are the conditions the inputs and also the outputs that is expected from your calculation and how do we go about solving this tutorial and also there's one more information that's given to you is that you need to assume ideal condition it means that the efficiency of the turbine, you're going to assume it to be 100%. Of course, this is not going to happen in the actual world, but this is ideal condition. Okay, and if you remember, what is our efficiency? So, efficiency is here. And if I write it again, efficiency is the work output from the turbine divided by the work input from the fluid. And now, this assumption is telling us that this efficiency is 100%. This means that W dot T is equal to W dot F. Okay, and we're going to use this equation later. But first of all, let's focus on question number one, which is to calculate the torque. And how do we find torque for this turbine? Right, now let's go back to our equations that we have derived before. And torque is equal to rho Q times R1 VT1 minus R2 VT2. Okay, and I think we may have everything that we need. So I'm going to copy that equation here. So torque is equal to rho Q times R1 VT1 minus R2 VT2. Okay, do we have everything that we need here? And also one more thing that I forgot to tell you is that this turbine is running on water. So the rho is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, and according to this equation, we need rho and q. Do we have them? I think we do. So this is our rho and this is our q. So these two is settled. How about R1 and R2? I think we also have R1 and R2. And the thing that we need to find now is VT1 and VT2. But because we know the velocity triangle, I don't think this is going to cause you much trouble. Okay, let's take a look at our velocity triangle. Okay, now remember we have V1 and we are looking for VT1. Okay, so we have already V1 and we are looking for VT1. And I think quite simply, VT1 is simply V1 cos alpha 1. Is that correct? And VT2 
is v2 cos alpha 2 and i think we have v and we have alpha right so we can solve this equation and find the torque quite simple so in here this is rho q r1 v1 cos alpha 1 minus r2 v2 cos alpha 2 and i think we have everything so rho is 1000 let's plug in the value 1000 q is 0 0.057 r1 is 300 millimeter this has got to be millimeter right so this is 0 0.3 v1 is 6 cos alpha 1 is 30 minus r2 is i think 0 0.15 that's correct 0 0.15 and our v2 is 3 this again 0 0.15 our v2 is 3 and cos alpha 2 what is our alpha 2 cos 80 degrees Okay, and let's calculate the value of torque. 0 0.3 times 6 cos 30 minus 0.15 cos 80 times 1000 times 0.057. So this gives me 84.4 Newton meter. Right, so 84.4 Newton meter and make sure you get this value correct. So if you are answering exam question, I have a tip for you. Okay, whenever you calculate something, let's say here you get the value of torque, which is 84.4 Newton meter. You need to have something inside your mind that's telling you how much is 84.4 Newton meter. What does it feel to have 84.4 Newton meter of torque? Of course, we know what one meter is. We can feel, we can tell what one kilogram is. We know how long one second is, but can we imagine what 1 newton meter of torque feels like and what does it feel to have 84.4 newton meter of torque so just a general estimation based on my reading before okay so if you know in malaysian market we have produa asia right produa asia 1.0 liter okay and that car produces about 90 newton meter of torque so now you can imagine that this turbine can actually output the torque that is similar with moving a produa asia so that's how you imagine what those numbers means and when you have this in the back of your mind whenever you calculate something and you feel like something is off let's say later when you calculate power and then you get the power that is so big like one megawatt that's not possible right because asia is a small car it won't be producing that much power then you know that you may have made some calculation mistakes maybe you get the unit wrong maybe you miss a few decimal places so that's how you check your answer okay so that is a tip for you in case you are answering examination question later and now let's move on to our second question which is the turbine head and i think this is when you need to use this assumption okay assumption of ideal condition so we know that wt is equal to w dot f and what is our w dot t if you remember from our equation here w dot t is omega t and w dot f is rho g q h t so now because w dot t is equal to w dot f let me write this again here because w dot t is equal to w dot f right and w dot t is omega times torque and w dot f is rho g q times h t so this is now similar right omega times torque will equal to rho g q h t and guess what we already have omega here right okay so omega this is 25 let me confirm it yes that's right 25 radians per second torque is 84.4 this is what we just calculated. Rho is 1000, gravity is 9.81, Q is 0.057. So what remains is HT. Right? So HT is 25 times 84.4 divided by 1000, divided by 9.81, divided by 0.057. So this is 3.77 meter. Remember the unit for HT is meter and there you go this is your second answer now i think you can imagine 3.77 meter is about the length of a car but what does it mean to have 3.77 meter of 
turbine head. Imagine that you have a turbine here. The turbine is operating using water, so water will come in here and rotate the turbine blade. Okay, and then the water, if you stack it on top of the turbine, right, this will be the 3.77 meter. With 3.77 meter at this RPM, the turbine will produce 84.4 newton meter of torque. Right? And finally, I think it's looking for the fluid power. Right? And because the fluid power is similar with turbine power, we can find it using W dot T. Okay, W dot T is omega torque. So this is 25 times 84.4. So this is 25 times 84.4. 2110 watt. Okay, so remember the unit for power is watt. And this is usually we write it as 2.11 kilowatt. Okay, so there you go guys. You have calculated the torque, the turbine head and also the fluid power. And I think this is quite a very simple tutorial, mainly because we've already been through the tutorial of the pump, right? Where we have to draw the velocity triangle and everything. But for turbine, we have all the necessary equations that we need in order to solve this equation. So again, even though this video is short, it's because we've already drawn the velocity triangle. If you are to solve a real problem, a real, let's say, examination problem, then you will need to draw again the velocity triangle. You need to know how to draw it. You need to know how to label it properly so that you know the trigonometric relationships of the velocity triangle. Only then you will get this kind of relationship. So do this tutorial again and again until you can do it without looking at this video and then try to find another problems in the book and solve that problem and if you have any question about this tutorial do not hesitate to leave a comment down below so that's it from me this time i'll talk to you soon bye